I hope that um, we're going. I'm going to be able to make this work. I've got a video up here. Um, I think one of the classes saw it today, and I'm going to describe for you what's going on. But anyway, you can see um, if you if this doesn't work and you can't get the link um, through um, through my video here, then you can put, of course, the um, address there in your browser and watch the video yourself. I want to talk to you just a little bit of what's going on. Um, the gentleman in the video had taken a piece of wood and put a sheet of paper on the wood and he put two thumbtacks in the paper and then he tied a string loosely, a loose string around those tacks. Okay? Now, this has a lot of bearing on what an ellipse is and does and how to draw one. Uh, he put a pencil right in here where I put the dot, and he traced with that pencil that taut piece of string around those two thumbtacks. Well, as he did that, a perfect ellipse was drawn around. Uh, that's not very perfect, is it? But was a draw was drawn around his thumbtacks. Those two points, though, where those tacks are, if I were to graph a circle, those two points are the focal points of an ellipse, or we call them the foci. So I want you to get a look at, at that foci because that's going to be important to us. So please watch that video. If you can't see... If you can't push um, the button now and watch it, at least put that in your browser and watch what's going on. Then I'll have one more video I want you to look at as well. Okay, now after you've watched the drawing for just a, it's just a couple of minutes for the video, then I want you to review ellipses by looking at another video of uh, a Khan Academy video. Let me see if I can put, there's the website for the YouTube address for that video in which he starts talking about the basics of an ellipse. And I want to talk to you about that as well, but you need to watch the video first. And it's about 14 minutes. So watch your Khan Academy video first, especially if you have not had ellipses before or if if you just went through it quickly and, and didn't go over it in great detail. Okay, so once you watch the Khan Academy, then we want to discuss in more detail an ellipse. Okay, I'm hoping that by now you have watched both videos. That's going to be to your benefit to make you understand ellipses more. Now let's see if I can draw an ellipse. An ellipse is an oval or like an Easter egg since Easter's coming pretty soon. Here is my ellipse. The center of my ellipse could be the origin, but it might also be, you know, any other point on the Cartesian plane. So I'm going to um, put on here, let's go ahead and put this on an axis. Uh, the axis that we put it on may be the X and the Y axis, but it may be any other horizontal and vertical line. So if I can make a prettier horizontal line and vertical line, let's see if I can do that. Okay, here's my horizontal. And then let's see if we can get a nice vertical one here. Okay, so we will have our um, ellipse, and we've got our center of our ellipse. And you know what else we can see? We can see this is, you know, uh, it's, it's longer left to right th than up or down. It could have been longer up and down, but I just had to pick away, so this is the way I chose. So since this is, since this is the way that I chose, the longest piece... This piece right here that I'm zigzagging in 
from like endpoint to endpoint. Since it's the longest one, this is called my major axis. Well, I didn't spell that very pretty. Oh, my goodness, what did that do? My goodness gracious. I have no idea what I did there. Y'all be patient with me. My heavens. Okay, this is the major axis. I'll put that back up there again. My goodness. And then the one that I'm going to color in uh, blue... That's on my minor axis. Even my, my axis got off a little bit, didn't it? It certainly did. Well, this is my minor axis. So the short one is always called the minor axis, and the uh, long one is always called the major axis. Even if this guy was standing straight up and down, instead of going left to right. Okay, so we know what our ellipse looks like, and we know we have a major and a minor axis. So let me put him up here again so we can talk about him real carefully. There he is. Okay, and again, we've got our major axis across here. And then we have our minor axis coming here. Okay? Now, just like we have a general form for the circle that we talked about um, in today's lesson, we also have a general form for an ellipse. And that form is x minus h squared over a squared plus y minus k squared over b squared equals 1. In this case, okay, when we look at this, since the number under the a in, in our picture is bigger, that's why it's the longest axis. Let me explain that a little bit better. From looking at my uh, formula. These are things that I can come up with, or my standard form. HK is still the center, just like it was in the circle. So, this is the point HK. Okay? All right, and again, we have, this is our major axis because it's longer. This is the minor axis because it's longer, I mean shorter, not because it's vertical or not because it's horizontal. It's just the big one and the little one. Now, the A and the B are what are significant about our axes, okay? The A, if I take the square root of A and I get... Uh, a and double it, two times A is the length of the axis uh, horizontally. Okay, so once I know my center, I know to go left A units and right A units. So if I can make this draw, let's see, this is A units, and this is A units, so the entire length of my major axis is 2A. Okay, now to find my vertical axis, I bet you already know, 2B is going to be the axis vertically. So from my center up to the point on the ellipse is B, and down is B, so the entire minor axis is 2B. Now, again, I could switch this around. If my circle or my ellipse was standing up, 
sort of like if you ever watched VeggieTales, sort of like Larry the Cucumber, um, then the minor axis would be the from X um, from X to X, and it would be the horizontal. And my major axis would be my vertical axis. That doesn't matter which is which. But when you do have uh, this particular um, equation for your uh, ellipse, there is another important number that's not given to us in our equation, but it's important that we find it, and that is c squared. Now, this kind of makes you think of the Pythagorean theorem. So, um, c squared is significant for us, but this time it's found by taking the major axis and subtracting that minor axis squared. So we take the big number minus the small number, and that gives us our c squared. When we solve for c, c tells us the distance from the center to the foci. Now remember, the foci were where the thumbprint the hacks were on the man that drew the first um, picture for us. I think we need a different color here. Let me get the color black for our foci. So in here somewhere, he has a foci, foci 1 and foci 2. They're the same distance from the center. And that, that pair of points are the two points that I could connect the string to. Put the pencil in the string. And anywhere uh, I would draw, if I put a pencil right there, and then circled out, I would could, I could make my ellipse. Okay, this this nice pretty ellipse. But why do I want to tell you all this and want to tell you about about C? Well, let's look at the next slide, and I'll show you where I'm going with this. You, some of you had asked about this earlier in the year. So I'm, I'm reviewing you on the ellipse to call your attention to this, this next slide. Okay. This is sort of a summary here of your um, information that I've given you. Um, this piece here, this, this is what this is trying to say there. They didn't have, I guess, an exponent. Um, character or something. But what I want to show you is this right here. This is what's important to me. The eccentricity of the ellipse. If I take my C that I found, okay, by this formula, if I take the C and divide it by A, that tells me my eccentricity or the ovalness of your oval or the squishiness of the oval. So what I want you to remember from this is that for any ellipse, the eccentricity is going to be between 0 and 1. If the eccentricity reaches the number 0, that is when you have a beautiful, perfect circle. If the eccentricity is to reach 1, then you no longer have an ellipse. You just are going to have basically an ellipse that has been smooshed down so that it's a line, okay? Or a segment, I should say, either way. So an oval's eccentricity is going to be between 0 and 1, but the circles that we've been studying, circles will always have an eccentricity of 0, okay? And I just saw that in this, okay, the center of the ellipse. Um, so that's what that's the point I'm trying to make.
So you need to remember that as well. Okay? All right. That's the end of this chapter for us.